friends the second question in the essay paper of 2022 means is poets are the unacknowledged legislators of the world so first you have to try to interpret this essay mostly if you try to interpret every word in the essay in a broad sense you will be able to generate more points see poets poets means not only those who write the poems but also those who write short stories novels folk songs philosophers who write their philosophy who pen down those who pen down their thoughts for us to read can be called as poets because if you confine this only to the poets then you have to remember the poems and most of us may not remember the poems if you cannot remember the poems you cannot write the essay that's why you broaden that's so not just poems but any writer can be called as a poet so poets are the unacknowledged legislators legislators means those who make the laws policies acts rules codes of conduct whatever legislators who make the rules so poets indirectly they make the rules for the world or for the country society why because poets observe society nature environment they understand the problems of women tribes and on those things they write their poems or stories whatever inspired from these poems inspired by the ideas of these poets inspired by the thoughts of these poets or story writers the law makers make the laws made the environmental laws tribal laws laws on the women these acts policies laws are inspired by the thoughts of the poets so indirectly you can say that poets are legislators because their thoughts are coming in the form of acts so but they are unacknowledged because they do not make the laws directly they are not acknowledged as the law makers that's why we call them poets are unacknowledged legislators of the world so this is the topic given in the second question now here as i always tell you you can start the essay with a current affairs example a story to make it interesting and after finishing the story then you can uh, describe your understanding of the topic given this is question number 2 friends so for example you may introduce the essay by a story one story one one nice example i thought about is csr in the companies act 2013 this is a piece of legislation this is an act companies act 2013 by government of india this act actually as you know very well says that any company which has a net profit of more than 5 crores has to spend 2% of their net profits on the social responsibility made be for environment or made be for uh, solving the problem malnutrition healthcare education whatever so here this law this law made by the government of india is actually indirectly based on the idea of gandhi gandhi in this case is a poet he is a writer because gandhi wrote in in the in the newspaper in the book he wrote many times about the concept of trusteeship how wealthy people should create trust and the money in the trust shall be utilized for development of society for development of the weaker sections trusteeship concept in fact gandhi ji during the independence movement he actually convinced the famous industrialists who are very well the industrialists to contribute certain amount from their profit for the national movement as well as for the benefit of the weaker sections so drawing the inspiration from the gandhi's thoughts this act has been made see obviously the act was not made just by the gandhi ji's thought other reasons are also there but before the act was made gandhi ji all discussed about it so we can call him as an inspiration so if gandhi ji is a poet here unacknowledged legislator the legislation is csr companies act to don't so with this example by writing this example indirectly you are telling the evaluator clearly about the meaning of the essay now after this now you can tell or explain the meaning of the essay you know uh, in whatever way you want for example i would actually explain each word i would say according to me what a poet means i would say poet here is anybody who writes his thoughts a philosopher a philosopher or some an essayist a short story writer a novelist anybody can be a poet and here legislators are those who make rules policies codes not only laws even for example civil service conduct rules 
they are the rules. Even they also we call it as legislators. Means I am considering the word legislator in a broad sense here. For example, civil service contract rules are inspired by the writings of several great people in the past. Even the mythology, Indian mythology, Mahabharata also wrote about what are the contract rules of you know those who rule the nation. Friends, why we call them as unacknowledged? Because they do not make the laws directly. That's why they are not acknowledged as legislators. Like that, I will spend a paragraph in explaining the meaning of the quotation in my own words. Then, see, obviously in the UPSC essays, these days they are philosophical essays, to explain the essay you have to write more examples. But ensure that you do not write the examples in the same sector. If one example is from the social issues, women, underprivileged, whatever, one from science technology, one from international affairs, one from you know economy, polity, try to write examples from different sectors so that it will be interesting to read. It will be multidimensional. However, do not write just examples. Along with examples, write your opinion, ideas also. Because I have seen some students writing only examples throughout the essay. That is not a good way of writing the essay. You have to write some examples and also you have to write your opinion or theory, substantiate the examples. Now, friends, some examples that I would write is generally I would prefer to use Gandhi in most of the essays wherever possible Gandhi because Gandhi's ideas are widely accepted. And Gandhi has spoken, Gandhi actually spoke, Gandhi spoke on various issues, right from the women, environment, uh, you know, weaker sections, independence, freedom, nature, means a lot of things. So obviously, any topic you can bring Gandhi and bringing Gandhi will make the essay more authentic according to me. So that's why we can easily write four to five examples of Gandhiji. For example, Swachhbal scheme is there. Such a scheme, though it is not an act, it is a policy made by legislators and it actually derived from the idea of Gandhiji. That is why they started Swachh Bharat uh, mission, the government started on the day of birth of Gandhiji, the birthday of Gandhiji. So, like their friends, many other aspects also you can explain. For example, in the book Hind Swaraj, in his book Hind Swaraj, Gandhiji wrote very well about how we should not pollute the rivers, how industries should take care of the air and water, they should not pollute the air and also how they should avoid the noise pollution, he wrote. Actually in those days there was no much awareness about the environmental laws or acts or policies. People in those days did not actually think much about, did not actually think much about environment because those days the problem is much about poverty and getting independence, solving the poverty problem equality society and getting independence. There was no concern about environment, but in those days Gandhiji as a visionary, foresight, is able to think about environment. How if India follows the methods of the West, Western countries by that time already were industrialized, already polluting the air, water. So Gandhiji thought that when India gets independence, we should not walk the path of the West. We should not pollute the environment, mother nature. So those ideas of Gandhiji, those ideas of Gandhiji, were actually codified in the Environment Protection Act 1996. Though Gandhiji never used the word environment protection, indirectly he, he has given the ideas based on which we have built up the act. So here again, if Gandhiji is a poet, his ideas helped in forming legislation indirectly. Indirectly. Also, you can talk about, you know, friends, even constitution is the a masterpiece of legislation. Constitution also an act made by legislatures. So in the constitution also several ideas were born out of the writings of Gandhiji, ideas of Gandhiji. For example, in DPSPs, some of the directive principles of state policy were called Gandhi and DPSPs. They were derived from the ideas of Gandhiji. You can explain some of them, but do not spend much time on these articles. Just touch them and leave them because topic is not the constitution of India. So just mention, for example, the village panchayats, article 40 is derived by the Gandhi's ideas of self-governance at the local levels and your article 43 how Gandhiji felt that cottage industries village shall be the center of the development growth engine of the India how cottage industries have developed Gandhiji in a way is against the heavy industries large scale industries he mostly want to promote the cottage industries because villages are the place where the Indians live according to him similarly he always worked for the weaker sections the weaker sections he always worked the scheduled castes and tribes. So, these ideas were, implemented, were codified in Article 46. How we have to educate them, empower them economically? O only when you empower them economically, educationally, they would be empowered socially also. That is the idea. 
Similar article 47, prohibition of the intoxicating drink and how government have to ensure public health. Article 48, how, you know, even recently also government made an act on prohibiting slaughter of cows. So every act, every legislation was inspired from somebody. Some from Gandhiji, some from Nehru, you know, some from international thinkers, Henry David Thoreau, etc. Friends, similarly, as you know, I am from uh, the Telugu states, I can take some examples of Telugu poets because I remember some poems of Telugu writers. Similarly, for example, you are from Gujarat. If you know some Gujarati poet, his ideas, if you know, you can write them. You can just write uh, in Gujarati, you can write, for example, see, here I wrote like this, the Telugu, the Telugu. But once you write in Gujarati, Telugu, Hindi, whatever, you have to translate, explain what do you mean in English. So, a famous Telugu po poet, Gurujara Parav, he actually, in one of his poems, in one of his poems, somewhere in between, he mentioned that Indians should develop the skills and all the goods in India should be filled by the indigenous, means indigenous goods have to fill India. We should not import the goods, we should not be dependent on others, we have to be self-sufficient. So based on that poet's idea, not only his idea, many other poets also wrote that, but here I have taken him as a poet. From his poem, I have taken a line, from this I can say, the Make in India scheme, not only making India scheme, several schemes of India that want to indigenize the production. So those things we can say are inspired from poets like Gujarat Paro. Not this poet alone, but poets like this have inspired to make such kind of acts. So he is a poet, this is a legislation. Similarly friends, same Gujarat Paro, he wrote a famous story called Kanya Sulkam. There he addressed the problems faced by the women in society. So these social evils, as he has explained the social evils, based on that poem, public Able, public is able to understand the social evil. See, poets are visionaries, writers are visionaries. They observe the things very keenly. Sometimes a problem that we cannot identify, they can identify. So once they identify the problem, explain the problem, it comes into the public odium. Then the public start feeling the problem. Then they actually convey it to legislators. When legislators are the representatives of the people, they start making laws to solve that problem. So you can write in that aspect of Kanya Sulkam. But though it was written before independence, it has inspired many laws, many laws and acts. For example, even the British time also, when British was ruling India, British made several laws based on the thoughts and writings of many Indian philosophers, Indian thinkers. For example, Raja Ramohan Roy, his writings, his works, his ideas, his campaigns have actually inspired the British legislators to abolish Sati. They made an act. Abolishing Sati, they made an act. Similarly, Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar, his writings, his ideas, his persuasion has made. He, if he is a poet, the legislation is Widow Remarriage Act is a legislation. That legislation is inspired from Ishwar Chandra Vidya Sagar and many other social reformers also. Similarly, Child Marriage Prohibition Act, this act in 1929 and amended uh, later. So this is also based on several writers' ideas. Many poems were written on the problems faced by women or girls who are married at a very tender age. Friends, similarly, dowry prohibition. There are many folk songs, local songs, again as the dowry, how dowry is a major problem, how dowry is leading to the domestic violence. So understanding these problems, government has made a law, dowry prohibition act. Like that, friends, see, I have addressed some of the poems or legislations. You can take some other legislations, and if you can remember any poet or thinker who addressed the problem previously, mention his name. Tell that he is a poet. This is a legislation inspired from the thoughts of the poet. Friends, one more thing I will tell you, as I told in the beginning, don't write just example, write your opinions. For example, I told you, you know, poets observe the problem society, they bring the problem to the public odium, they express the problem in detail, so public start feeling about it. And poets are visionaries, they can think what problems may happen in the future, and poets sometimes think about what government should do how people should behave, what are ethics, what are morals, importance of environment, how should we conserve tribes. So all their ideas will be codified by the legislators. So like that, you know, some, some poems are logical, some are imaginary, but still, even based on that also, lot of you know, aspects of civilizations were built. Several civilizations were built on the basis of writings of some poets. So you can tell stories like that. Friends, but poets are not acknowledged. Why? Because they are not legislators. Their ideas may be accepted, may not be accepted. Part of their idea may be accepted or it may be accepted in, 
in totality. It depends. That is why we cannot acknowledge them as a legislator. As I told you, poet is visionary, philosopher, lawmaker. And friends, this statement that poets are unacknowledged legislators of the world, this statement was actually given by Shelley, a writer called Shelley. But you no need to know that. UPSC is not expecting you to know who wrote that uh, statement and what do Shelley mean by statement. The writer Shelley may mean something else by the statement. It does not, it does not, you, you no need to know about it. You have to interpret in your own way that statement. What do you mean by the statement? Explain clearly, substantiate the examples. That's enough. Okay. Friends, see, then uh, uh, as I told you, why to write only about the Indian poets? You write uh, about some American poets, British poets, or some poets Southeast Asia. If you know anybody, you write somebody. For example, Thomas Jefferson, very famous. You might have read about him in the Polity Public Administration, wherever. So, Thomas Jefferson, based on his writings, he actually wrote that all men are created equal and they are given some unalienable rights, some fundamental rights, which cannot be alienated from them. They are given by the creator. Creator has created all people equal and given them equal rights. So, based on this idea of Thomas Jefferson only, USA has 13 states, 13 states USA initially have made declaration of independence. So, that piece of legislation is born out of the thoughts of Thomas Jefferson. Similarly, fundamental rights. In, the, in many countries' constitution, you can see fundamental rights. Most of them are actually born out of the ideas of Thomas Jefferson, along with many other people also. Similarly, I, I have taken the tribal rights. For example, the you know, FRA Act 2006, uh, FRA Act is based on the importance we have to give to the tribes and generations wise, they belong to certain piece of land. That land belongs to them from several generations and hence you cannot alienate them from the land and they should be given the right over the land and certain forest produce. So, this act is made based on several writers who wrote about the problems faced by the tribes because of alienating them from the land taking them out of the land, not giving them right over the produce of the forest. So, which is ethically, morally wrong on the part of the government. By understanding these writings by many writers, government finally came up with this act. Even Nehru wrote on the, you know, tribes. He said that how we have to respect the tribes and how we should give tribes, uh, we, we should have to give uh, tri uh, tribes the right to collect the forest produce, to stay in their land and how administration should not uh, you know, uh, compel them to go against their culture and how several schemes should not be confused when it comes to the tribes and how they should be having their own administration based on their traditional culture without affecting the general administration of the nation. So, in these ways, Nehru has given a punch wheel, five principles based on that also this law is made actually. This law is made based on writings of several writers. Even friends, recently Jacinta Kerkata, a Jharkhand, a very young girl, at 13 years, age, 14 years old, she started writing on the tribal problems. Even her writings were considered by the Jharkhand government in making the rules protecting the tribes in the Jharkhand. Friends, even Voltaire, Voltaire, because we read about him in world history. See, whatever you read in the UPS, in the, in the world history or in the polity, those thinkers only you can use. You don't need to have special knowledge on the literature or poems. For example, Voltaire wrote on the freedom of religion. He wrote how a church should be separated from the state. In those days, Catholics used to dominate the administration also. So he said that that would not lead to good governance. So we have to separate church from the state. And he said freedom of expression is very important for every man, every citizen in the country. So, based on the ideas of Voltaire only, the Western secularism, friends, I think you know that in the West, secularism is different. UPSC gave this question many times. Secularism in the West is different. Secularism in India is different. In Western countries, secularism means church should be separate from the state. In India, secularism means religious, means you, have to, you should be able to tolerate all religions, equal respect given to all religions by the government in India. So, in the West, secularism laws were made based on the Voltaire ratings. In India, it is based on the traditional history of India. One of the poets you can consider Akbar. One of the poets who is inspiration to secularism in India can be Akbar. But along with Akbar, even Gandhi is also an example, but here I wrote about, I wrote about Akbar. Akbar 
has created religion, religion called Din Ilahi with the idea that all religions essentially have different roots but same destination with this idea equal respect tolerance towards all religions is very very essential in a multi religious country like india is what was identified by akbar based on that he wrote and be inspired from that we have developed secularism of india friends again you can choose any of the writers you can mention if you remember any any of the quotations of socrates plato aristotle chanakya even for mahabharata also if you remember anything in mahabharata also there was a conversation between bhishma and dharmaraj about the good governance what a king shall do how the ruling should happen so anything for example any quotation you remember from these famous people on the good governance you can quote that and tell that based on that the concept of good governance all the legislations all the legislations relevant to the governance were made from their ideas so if they were the poets this is a legislation and they were the unacknowledged legislators of this legislation you can write like that for example virtue ethics of aristotle or deontological ethics of immanuel kant these are the writers famous writers famous poets philosophers whatever philosophers so from their writings we have developed the civil service code of conduct so even this this also you can call as a piece of legislation because here i am identifying legislation in a broader sense not just as a law but act policy rule scheme whatever even for example the right to equality a fundamental right we can say was inspired from the buddha because before buddha the past religion followed in india do not have equality among different castes the varna system has actually differentiated the people whereas buddha said that all are equal right to equality is a fundamental principle and based on the buddhist philosophy also right to equality can be derived similarly the famous book gitanjali by rabindranath tagore collection of poems there he actually emphasized on the importance of freedom so here right to freedom which actually became you know uh, inspiration for several legislations even the fundamental right in the constitution of india can be called as inspired from this book similar swami vivekananda he always swami vivekananda though he said he talked much about hinduism he always said religion shall not dominate the scientific enquiry scientific spirit we should have the rational thinking logical thinking we should be given the power to question anything you question anything and once you get the answer then only accept it no need to accept anything blindly we should not accept anything blindly is what swam vivekananda said so this kind of rational thinking scientific spirit is added in the constitution of india in fundamental duties article 51a so like that friends you can see i try to tell talk about some foreign thinkers some religious thinkers some thinkers of ancient india Uh, some thinkers of uh, modern india medieval india means i try to combine thinkers from different places and different times so that we can address it multidimensionally also i chose some from environment some from tribes some from governance so that i would be addressing different sectors it won't be boring for the evaluator to evaluate friends then in the conclusion i would say that poet shall be encouraged that thought shall be considered when government wants to make a law or scheme on that issue if there are some famous poets writers from the past thousands of years if anybody wrote on that issue read those issues get ideas from those thinkers visionaries from that you make a law when we want to make a law on any particular uh, particular woman or environment whatever before making the making the law you go through some famous poems poets writers thinkers so that you can uh, take some of their ideas so this is my conclusion here i am slightly glorifying the poets or glorifying the visionaries or writers so you can conclude whatever we want or you can again conclude by a story if you want thank you friends we'll go for third question next video